Um, with that said, we, as I mentioned, there is one other elected official with us today, and that is our, our guest speaker, um, uh, a member of the Portland Community College's Board of Directors, and I believe he's uh, the chair still this term. And so we will hear now from one of our most involved uh, public servants in our community, and that's Mohamed al The uh, Go right ahead. Take it away, my friend. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for the invitation, and glad to be back. I mean, I'm a PCP as well, and newly re-elected, I guess, um, for the second time. So um, I was hoping to be in this meeting anyway, but it worked out that I came for this event specifically, but I also wasn't planning on being here because I'm currently in another event, uh, the PCC function with our Future Connect program with our great mayor, Steve Calloway, who's in door right now yelling, and, and uh, Mayor uh, Ted Wheeler as well. So I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here speaking on this topic, but also I'm usually a regular member of the meeting, so thank you for having me back. Uh, as Tajik mentioned, my name is Mohammed Ali Ajuri. Uh, he, him, his. I am the current chair of the Portland Community College Board of Trustees. Can everyone hear me okay, by the way? I'm just kind of rambling and in check first. Can you hear yeah, me you're going through, you're going through great. Uh, I've been on the, oh, great, perfect. I've been on the PCC board for five years now. I was elected in 2017 during what I call the Trump elected, um, all the folks that ran my cohort, my colleagues that ran together in the same election. Uh, and I've been the chair of the past two years. And it's been a great honor of mine to serve on the PCC board. Uh, and for those of you who I haven't met yet, I, uh, my, my story on PCC is actually pretty um, interesting for myself and symbolic in a way. The, the, at the time, the chair that's of the board resigned in protest of sanctuary campus status. And that opened up the vacancy for my position. And uh, some community leaders reached out to me and asked that I consider running and I had never been in an election or ran for office or even considered the idea. And I was appointed to the board, appointed to the board in March of 2017 uh, and then ran in May. So I had a one month turnaround for campaigning and learning all the ins and outs of, of public office. So I was fortunate to have a lot of support from many of you on this call, to be, to be honest, that helped me and helped me guide and guided me through this process and allowed me to feel uh, supported and welcome into the world of public service. Uh, and uh, I uh, identify as Muslim, as Arab American, as um, first generation immigrant. And I have been uh, representing all those different communities my entire life. And most recently in my life here in the Portland, uh, Washington County area. I moved up here eight years ago from Corvallis, Oregon, where I grew up. Uh, I currently reside in Washington County. I work in Washington County. I serve Zone 6 of PCC Board, which is Southwest Washington County and Yamhill County. And I just I was just reelected last May. Um, so I, I definitely have many hats that I love to, in, in, in honor to represent uh, whenever I can. And most importantly, my Muslim community. Uh, we have uh, been through a lot as a community here in Oregon, in the US, to be honest. And as Patrick opened up the session today with the hor horrific news of the school shooting, yet another school shooting. And just to touch on that, um, the relevance of that to sort of my world. You know, my community has gone through a lot of tragedies and when these tra tragedies hit our community, school shootings or any violence and, of such, the Muslim community goes through two phases of, tra of tragedy and awe and fear, if you will. The first phase is us gasping to and wondering if that, uh, injustice or that tragedy was caused by a Muslim because we've been conditioned to think that because of the status quo and of the uh, history of uh, violence and, and prejudice and racism against Muslim Americans. And then after that, once we realize it's not a Muslim or a Muslim immigrant or a Muslim American or a convert, the, tra the second judge is, is us realizing as a, as a collective community of the unnecessary um, deaths that had to happen to small children or community members or church goers or synagogue goers and we join our communities our larger communities to help support uh, and advocate for ending of, of this violence this cycle of violence whether it be a synagogue attack or a school shooting or a mass stabbing you know we, we all come together as a community we do that because a the muslim community in washington county feels part of the community at large we are part of the fabric we've been here for generations but also to show and represent that we are also suffering uh, some of these tragedies. We are not, we don't like to be known as the other. We don't like to feel as the other. And so one way for us to feel like we're not the other, we, we get involved. We roll up our sleeves, we get involved. 
uh, you know, some of us like myself run for office and, and, and realize the platform that we can use to help support issues that affect all of us, not just in some community. Higher education being one of them, houselessness, uh, food insecurities, climate, but also to support our other colleagues and our community members who suffer injustices and tragedies that similar to what we've suffered in many years. Um, and so one of the first things I was going to talk about today is how our community can be supported by our county, by our services, by our city services, by our elected, by our good folks like you guys, is just to welcome the community members as they uh, reach out to give their voice or lend their voice to some of these platforms, some of these boards, some of these commissions, uh, you know, and, and making sure that everyone's represented, every voice, uh, every sector of the socioeconomic spectrum, uh, every language. And I know it's hard to do as a community to make everyone happy, if you will, but I think we're doing a great job of getting there to a point where we have resources and access to those services for the represented languages in our county. We are the most diverse county in Oregon. We, you know, I've, I, I read the stats and I'm always in, in astonishment to how many of us were born outside of the U.S. that live in our county. And so it's not surprising that we have a lot of movement towards achieving equity around all those areas. And it's getting better. And I really have to give props to our county chair and our city council of Beaverton and Hillsboro and, and Tiger and those various areas that have stepped up to allow our communities to feel welcome and to feel included, law, law enforcement as well. You know, I, I can't count how many times we've had law enforcement and city officials join us in our religious events, our holidays, in our community centers. I, I belong to the Muslim Educational Trust, which is on in Tiger off, off of Schultz Ferry. And so we had a, a beautiful center opened up not too long ago, and it's been visited by many of you, hopefully, and many city officials, county officials, state and federal officials. And that really was a, a huge boost for our ego, for our uh, confidence in being members of the community and in producing members of the community. Um, you know, the, the issue with the Muslim community is that we are seen as a monolith. We are not a homogenous group of people. We are represented by many, many, many countries, many, many, many languages, um, different backgrounds, different colors, different ethnicities. And so I, always a big advocate of disaggregation of data to represent communities, whether it's the Asian community or Muslim community or immigrant community, refugee communities, to better understand the needs of the community. We need to understand the specific makeup of the community. You know, we have, uh, you know, varying degrees of socioeconomic status within the Muslim community. Uh, we have, you know, black Muslims, white Muslims, and we have everything in between. And not everyone comes from the same space. We have immigrants, we have refugees, we have thriving, uh, highly educated folks, business owners, we have elected officials, and we have, uh, you know, uh, scientists and, and, and many, many students and, and single uh, parent families. So we represent a diaspora of all that's about Washington County, but I think we need to be better educating our larger community of who we are and what we need to be supported. And I think I invite all of you, if you haven't had a chance to visit any of our community centers, uh, we have about 11 or 12 mosques in the Portland area maybe four or five in the Washington County area, including the Muslim Educational Trust, which is also a K through 12 accredited school, by the way. And we have a really good relationship with the other schools, uh, whether it's faith-based educational institutions or private or public. And, and we try to be inclusive and um, we try to have faith-based initiatives, interfaith-based initiatives, and allowing us to use the spaces in the county is a huge bonus to, to promote that message across the county. Um, you know, I, I work closely with a lot of folks who help coordinate our festivities, our events. For example, after Ramadan, we had a, we had the honor of using some of the county spaces, whether it's the convention center or the city parks or even the uh, Hillsborough Stadium. Those small efforts, they may be small in terms of uh, coordination on, on the part of the city government or county government, but they're huge for our community. We are 20 plus thousand members in this community with wide representation, wide reach, and also voters, to be honest. Let's not forget that part, it's important. And so having folks who come from backgrounds who have never voted, who have never been part of an election because of mistrust or distrust of the systems where they come from, I think a big piece of this is educating our communities on the process, and the civic process, allowing people to learn that anybody really can be anything, anybody can be involved, anybody can be a PCP, anybody can run for office, anybody can vote as long as they meet the basic requirements. And allowing us and the large community to be in, involved in, in, the, in the election process, um, I think it's it's I 
I'll be honest, I had, I didn't have that much uh, experience with the system here in the county until I ran for office. I had so many educators, if you will, people who came to me and, uh, and showed me how to file for election, how to campaign, how to you know, raise money. But also, we don't have to have elected office to be represented. I mean, we have commissions, we have committees, we have subcommittees, we have uh, appointed and, and elected. And so I think our community members have a lot to offer. And if we can help boost their ego and their confidence, if you will, to be able to be to to suppress that distrust they've had from their backgrounds and be involved in the local government, you the county would benefit hugely from our from our talented community members, uh, men, women, children, elderly, uh, even non English speakers. To be honest, if we can provide enough services to allow them to participate with their own way, we would have a lot of benefit from understanding what they're going through because what they're going through is what the larger community is going through. There's transportation issues, healthcare issues, uh, access to healthcare, access to education. I think it's just all our presentation, but it may be magnified or exacerbated by the fact that we're talking from a refugee status or um, a low-income immigrant community or a war-torn nation or asylum. Uh, but once they arrive in Washington County, they feel instantly at home and they leave all that behind. And I just hope that we can just push them that extra step to be participatory members of the community and not just bystanders or, or uh, pedestrians, if you will. I'll, I'll, Patrick, I'm not sure if you want me to pause for questions or I don't have any specific agenda or any talking points. I just wanted to speak from the heart and sort of represent what I think we're going through. And if people have questions, I'm happy to answer them throughout or I can wait till the end. Um, or if you have any specific issues you'd like me to highlight, Patrick, or anyone really, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know, we're just really excited to hear whatever you had to say. And so I really appreciate what you said so far. Um, so I think that if you want to just share anything else that you think is relevant to um, that, that folks should know that they may not, and especially with the focus on, uh, you know, being good allies, being good fellow community members. And then uh, if, if you want to let me know when you're ready to take a few questions and I'll, I'll uh, call on folks in the chat for you. Sure. I mean, there's a lot of, thank you, Patrick. There's a lot of areas where our community has already been supported. Uh, as I mentioned, Chair Harrington is one of the biggest advocates for our communities. She's visited community centers often. She has held events at her, her home. She had sponsored and co-sponsored uh, policies and, and grants to help with our needs in the community. I think if we can have more of us be out there and representing our collective or respective areas within our community, our Muslim communities, that'd be wonderful. My, my specific areas where I like to advocate is civic activism, is, if you will. Uh, I mean, obviously I'm in higher ed with PCC. PCC is the largest higher education institution in Oregon, and I'm honored to represent my community on the, on the board and as a chair. Uh, you know, we're working with tuition, working with access to education, equity like education, and we're now getting ready to, uh, to start a huge bond campaign, $485 million, and which impacts and benefits the whole community at large. And so to have my community members see that work being done by somebody from within, they would be more better advocates for the community at large and some of these programs that the city or the counties uh, advocate for. So allowing our community members to be uh, represented is my biggest ask from, from this collective group. Uh, and also making yourself visible to our communities, you know, at different events, different centers, different restaurants, if you are businesses. Uh, you know, I, I was told when I ran, when I was first elected, that I'm the first ever, first generation Muslim immigrant elected to any office in Oregon. Obviously, I was static and happy to hear that, but then I was instantly sad. And why is it that I'm the only one? And why has it taken this long? Well, thankfully, now we have three of us. We have myself, Nadia Hassan, who's the Beaverton City Councilor, and Nithi Safai, this is in the county. We also have Senator Casey Jama at the state level, um, and his, his lovely wife is in the school board. So we're, it's getting there. Uh, representation is everything for us. And so if you have, as a, an ally, if you have someone that you know within your circles who is um, potentially a great person to represent the community, but just need the extra nudge, mentoring or coaching or introduction to somebody who can help mentor them further, I, I, would, I would ask for you to do that and, and step up and help them see that and, and help them get the confidence they need to to participate as i said before a lot of our community members come from uh, backgrounds that didn't really allow for or facil facilitate free elections or participatory process in elections or civic activism and so it still seems a stigma as a taboo and so having more of us be out there in that space helps but also having allies to encourage us i was encouraged by several people and given the confidence to you know why not me i i, I could do this too and now 
having been in my fifth year as elected official, I'm really spending a lot of my time helping and supporting other candidates who are running for the first time, who are rerunning. And I just, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, and that's why I, I want to be a PCP again, just to add the extra level of support, if you will. Uh, and so allowing that space to be available for any of the community members who have felt neglected or isolated or ostracized because of, you know, wh where they came from, what they look like, what, what language they spoke, or um, it's, it would be a good help to us. We're already doing that work uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So I'll stop there. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, and again, it's, it's not just this meeting. I'm happy to speak up any meeting. Uh, I'm reachable by email, social media, as, you all, as a lot of you know. Um, one of my favorite things to do is speak about myself and my community and advocate and also educate. So with that, um, um, I'll open it for questions. All right. Thank you. Uh, we, I know you're, you're often here at our meetings, but it's nice to be able to take a, a, a meeting to just hear, hear your perspective and, and we really appreciate it. Um, all right. Looks like Lisa had a question for you. This is just a comment. I've been to some of the METs um, kind of events pre-COVID mostly when you had uh, meetings like with um, Jewish and and the Muslim community, you had meetings with Jewish Christian Muslim community. I thought those were wonderful. I just want to say thank you for doing that. And I'm hoping to see more. Those were excellent dialogues. You had dinners and dialogues. And so I just want to thank you for offering that to the community. Um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I was a member, uh, the co-chair of the, of the outreach committee for MET. And those are amazing events to coordinate because one of the reasons why I moved to this area, my family and I, my wife and I, was because of the interfaith work that the community center did, which was lacking in the community I grew up in. And, and that opened my eyes to a lot more than I ever anticipated. And I've just made so many more friends and colleagues and allies and just a, a special kind of relationship with the different faith organizations in the community. So thank you for saying that. All right. I see a lot of clapping hands. Leslie asked if we might see any invitations for interactive events. Yeah, I'm happy to share that after the, the call through email. I, there's a lot of organizations that do great work. Um, there's not a single website, if you will, but I'm happy to send the Muslim Educational Trust website, the Community Center, uh, Bilal Mosque Association, or the New Hillsboro Association. Uh, and just cool, there's a bunch of cool little organizations that are doing a lot of good work. I'll, I'll share those with you to share okay. with the membership. Okay, great. Thank you. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. All right. Well, I, I think that's all the questions that folks have. But again, really appreciated uh, you taking the time. I know you have so much going on. You do you serve our communities in a lot of ways. And so thank you very much for taking the time tonight. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Lisa. And I will see you all soon. I'll get back to my other event. I'll see you all at the next meeting. All right. Thank take you. care. See you soon. Take care. <laughs>